distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I'm happy to attend this event today to talk about just transitions and how I think about this issue. We have heard presentations and discussions. I'm from Kaohsiung City. Kaohsiung is an important industrial city in Taiwan. Who also suffer from severe air pollution. In the past, when we joke that when you drove through Kaohsiung City, you can smell the air differently. You can you can feel the air smell different, and you can feel that air is worse. Even until now. Air pollution in Kaohsiung City is still very serious. We probably have the the worst air pollutions in Taiwan for many years in a row. And some professor used the, our national healthcare data and noticed that citizens in Kaohsiung suffer a lot from lung cancer. And the lung cancers are related to their life, even though they are not smokers. Some people have been trying to find the root cause of air pollution in Kaohsiung, and of course, it is related to our industrial structure in Taiwan and in Kaohsiung. This is an explosion of oil refinery in Kaohsiung in October. This oil refinery have multiple accidents over the past few years, so some people requested to be closed. So this is actually a recent incident. It was a very serious explosion in the oil refinery in Kaohsiung. So the refinery. Impact many local communities and local neighborhoods. You can see this is the green part. Is the neighborhoods surrounding the oil refinery? So these residents suffer a lot. They are surrounded by many many factories. For example. The Taiwanese steel companies, the ship manufacturing companies, the petroleum company, etc., etc. There are also、um, harbor as well. So these people feel like living on an island, surrounded by factories. So they suffer from severe air pollution over the years. After the explosions. In October, the first request they had for the government was to relocate their villages and relocate their neighborhoods. I think it's a pity and pathetic because. They have been living here for a long time. In theory, the government should guarantee and provide them a better living environment. They have been living here for a century, but the first request after the explosion was to relocate their village because they know these challenges will be unresolved for many years. So that's why I, they think the only option. Is to relocate their neighborhoods and relocate their villages. At the same time, many of these villagers work in these company. So, these companies represent their employments and represent their survival. They cannot live without these companies. They are fully aware of the pollutions and the health、um, hazards. However. 
they cannot afford to live without these factories. We've been talking about just transition. There are several basic aspects of just transitions. First of all, poverty eliminations, reasonable employment, and sustainable developments. These are all important in just transition. To these villagers and residents, it is important to have just transitions, but they also want employment security. This is another example. This is an industrial park in Gaoxiong that focuses on petrochemical industry. It was founded in 1971. In 1993, there was a severe air pollution incident and pollutant leakage incidents in 1990s, and local residents held a very violent protest afterwards. At that time, Ministry of Economic Affairs had promised them that this industrial park will be closed. In the near future, however, this industrial park remains in operations until today. In 2018, the Gaoxiong City Government downgrade the industrial park, and in theory, it can no longer accommodate petrochemical industries. However, the downgrade process. Is unresolved and uncompleted, so it's always a struggle between environmental protections and economic developments. When it comes to just transition, you can see we will encounter more and more issue like this. After the Gaoxiong City Government planned to downgrade this industrial park, some of the union workers actually have a demonstrations. They hope that this industrial park would not be downgraded because they fear that if these industrial park and companies is relocated, they will lose their job. So there are different forces and different opinions regarding to this industrial park. Even until today, is still unresolved. In the in the international labor organizations, they emphasize on stakeholder engagement. They hope that through engagement, they can reach a consensus. If you look at this industrial park as an example. No consensus has been made so far. While some people would like it to be relocated, some people would like it to be closed, some people would like it to remain on the site. So there is a discrepancy and a little bit, a lot of differences in opinion between different groups. Originally, this industrial park would be closed in 2015. It's because that originally that the National Petroleum Company would close the refineries in 2015 in Gaoxiong. However, even after the refinery was closed in 2015, these Industrial park remain in operations. When the National Petroleum Company closed the refinery in 2015, we didn't see a lot of protest. So we need to probably take a look and review it. Why that this refinery was closed without a lot of protests? And of course that. The national corporation is different from the industrial park here. There are eleven different companies in this industrial park, and most of them are in petrochemical industries. 
and one of them is in manufacturing. But once again, CPC or the National Corp、uh, Petroleum Company、um, have different arrangement for their employees before it closed the refinery. They will transfer them to different sites. They will give them better pension payment. They will also have retirement plan as well. So、um, the National Petroleum Company (CPC) have a lot of prior arrangement before its closure. So that's why I think、um, the results will be very different from these two cases. We'll be talking about objectives by 2035 or 2050. I believe that climate crisis is something we need have to address. However, labors will be impacted in the process. We have to take that into consideration. Our previous speakers have mentioned about automobile industries. In Gaoxiong, we have steel making industry, petrochemical industries, and also scooter making company. The headquarter, one of the major scooter manufacturers in Taiwan, is headquarter in Gaoxiong. So, if they shift in the future from traditional scooter to hybrid scooter or electric scooter. How will this decision impact this company, and also how will it impact the suppliers of this company? Maybe this major manufacturers can adjust along the way. They started to produce electric scooter. When they produce traditional fossil fuel scooters, they probably manufacture in house. By eighty percent to ninety percent. However, if they start to make electric scooters, I think probably fifty percent of their process will be outsourced. In that case, they probably have to downsize their employment numbers. So this is relatively simple because the strategy is quite clear. However, for their suppliers, the situation is more complicated. In the past, they have their components supply by smaller、uh, manufacturers. For example, they have some of their、uh, motors and some of their components coming from other smaller suppliers. So, under the net zero process, this major Scooter manufacturers Kimco would definitely、um, reduce their orders from to their suppliers, and in that case, how will these smaller manufacturers adjust to it? Many of these smaller suppliers used to support, for example, agricultural machinery, but agriculture is also shrinking. So, what are there other options for them? So these are just some of the situation I noticed. Thank you.